Jaya Yamuna Tiravan Chari Jaya Kunjabi Hari Jaya Yamuna Tiravan Chari Jaya Kunjabi Hari Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Rathe Tagadada Shiva Sadhi Goda Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shira Teta Gadada Shiva Sadi Gauta Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shishi Radha Madhava King Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna Wer versteht kein Englisch? Who doesn't understand German? Okay. Yeah. So we speak in English. Hare Krishna. Ah, ich spreche leider in Englisch. Hare Krishna. Ähm, Übersetzung für Kishore Kund Mataji und hier das deutsche Buch, falls es gebraucht wird. We are reading from the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, continuing in the glorification and um, Memory of Dhruva Maharaj. There were two stories which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself all the time liked to hear and listen to. Who knows which those two stories are? And? Exactly, very good. Hare Krishna. So we are listening now to this beautiful story uh, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself wanted to hear again and again and again because it was so nice. So let's hear. Uh, we are at uh, text seven, or which text is on the board? Eight. Eight. Okay. Next one. Okay. Tat dal taya. No. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to read first the uh, Sanskrit, and uh, explain a little bit the verse, and then. I'm, we're going to chant the verse together. <coughs> Tvat Tataya means given by you. Vayu Naya by knowledge. Interesting. Idam mm, this. Achasta could see. Chit Chasta Achasta. Vishwam. Vishwam. Who knows? Vishwam. Vishwarupa. Hupat Kut Vishwami. Almost? Yes, universe. Yours, yeah. The whole universe, Vishwam. So, Tvat Tataya Vayu Na Yedam Achastha Vishwam. So, it's very poetic. It's not the normal word, uh, words that you would use for Achastha for seeing. Drishta is usually the word you use for seeing. And knowledge, Jnana, but this here, here it said Vayu Naya. Vayu Nana. Vayu Naya. It's a very beautiful word. And so, Tvat Tataya Vayu Naya Yedam Achastha Vishvam. Given by you this knowledge, he could see the whole universe. And then, Shupta, Shupta, Shushupta, Shupta Pra Du Pra Buddha. So, Shupta, what means Shupta? Shushupta, somebody, any guesses? Shupta, sleep, deep sleep. So, Shupta um, Pra Buddha means a man rising from sleep. Iva, like. Nata. What means Nata? Nata. Like Nataraj. Okay, that's actually a different Nata. Here's a Nata, means uh, Nata with long A, means oh my lord. Okay, then Bhavat 
Prapanaha, Lord Brahma, who is surrendered unto you. Bhavat Prapanaha. So it means Shupta Pradur Buddha, Shupta Pra Buddha, waking up from deep sleep, Eva Nata, um, like, O oh my Lord, um, Lord Brahma, who is surrendered unto you. Tasya Pravargya, Tasya, this Apavargya of persons desiring liberation. So this of persons desiring liberation, um, Tasya Pravargya, Shadanam, what means Shadanam? Yes, shelter, Krishna. There's a very beautiful verse or, or, or song. Krishna, Sharanam Mama. Please, I'm Krishna. I'm your, uh, I, I seek shelter at you. So this is the prayer. Excuse me. So Sharanam. Then Tava, your. Um, Pada Mulam, lotus feet. Mulam. Pada, I wouldn't know, but mulam, padam, padam mulam, means lotus feet here. So, tasya pavargya sharanam, and persons desiring liberation, they seek refuge, where at the lotus feet of the Lord. Tasya pavargya sharanam, tava pada mulam. Vishmartyate means can be forgotten. Krita vida, by a learned person. Krita vida. Katam, how? An artabando, a friend of the distress. There's also in um, and there's a um, uh, Bhagavad Gita verse. Um, da, um, there's four kinds of people who surrender to the Supreme Lord. How does the verse start? Chaturvidam mayashishtam. No, it's Gyana Kamra Bhagavad Gita. But another one. Artatogya so artarti. So there it said, those who are distressed and those who are desiring uh, material wealth, they surrender unto the Supreme. And there's also the word artwa, so here, friend uh, of those who are distressed, arta bando. So the whole verse means, Oh my master, translation and purport by his divine grace, Abhayi Chara Navinda Bhakti Vanda Samshira Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh master, Lord Brahma is fully surrendered unto you. In the beginning you gave him knowledge, and thus he could see and understand the desire of the universe. Now, that, uh, he could understand and see the entire universe, sorry. Just as a person awakens from sleep and visualizes his immediate duties. You are the only shelter of all persons who desire liberation. You are the friend of all who are distressed. How, therefore, can a learned person who has perfect knowledge ever forget you? So, now the Sanskrit, so that's just so that we understand the Sanskrit. Tat tataya vanu yadyedam achasta vishvam. Um, given by you this knowledge, he's, um, um, he can see the whole universe, so Shupta, by waking up, just like Lord Brahma. Just by Lord Brahma, like Lord Brahma is waking up, he can see the whole universe uh, through the knowledge. And then, Tasya Pavargya, those desiring uh, liberation. Um, Upon your lotus feet, Padam Ulam, um, they, uh, they, they seek shelter at your lotus feet. Those desiring liberation, they seek shelter at your lotus feet. Vish Martyate Krita Vida Katam Artabando. It means, uh, how can you be forgotten? How can you, O oh Lord, be forgotten who are the friends of the distressed? Hmm. Very interesting. Very, very poetic verse. So it's, it's a prayer of, uh, um, of, of Dhruva Maharaj to the Supreme Lord. When he sees the Lord, so he's like, he's poetically composing very beautiful verses immediately. And who, know, who knows why he's, comp uh, he's able to offer such beautiful verses? Yes, he was hit by the conchal of the Lord. Yeah, I also want to be hit by that one. <laughs> Could give much nicer classes, isn't it? <laughs> Would be nice. Okay. Let's chant the verse together. Tvatataya vayu naye damachasta vishvam. Shupta prabhu da eva nata bhavat prapanaha. Shupta prabhu da eva nata bhavat prapana. Shupta 
Tasya Pavar Gya Sharanam Tava Padamulam Tasya Pravar Gya Sharanam Tava Padamulam Vishmaryate Krita Vida Katam Arta Bando Vishmar Yate Krita Vida Katam Artam Bando Tvatataya Vayunaya Yedam Achashta Vishvam Shupta Prabuddha Ivanata Bhavat Prapana Tasya Pavargya Sharanam Tava Padamulam Vishmar Yate Krita Vida Katam Arta Bando Jai. So let's read again the translation. Oh, who can remember the translation? You can try? <laughs> yes, very good. The rest of it. We, we discussed a little bit the Sanskrit words. Somebody can try to figure it out, the whole, at least the first line, first line, Vishwam, what was the self of the universe? And Shupta, sleeping, just waking up like, yeah? Somebody trying? Okay. Some, okay, let, let, let me try. Um, somebody, um, Vishwam, the whole universe, um, with, uh, waking up, seeing the whole universe with knowledge, just like Lord Brahma, uh, um, he, he, he got enlightened. So by just waking up and realizing the whole universe, he, he woke up. And then Tasya Pavargya, those um, shelting, Sharanam Padamulam, who knows this one? Lotus Feet, Sharanam Padamulam, those seeking shelter, the Lotus Feet, yes. Tasya Pavargya, Sharanam Padava Padamulam, those, seeking shelter, uh, those who seek uh, liberation, they are seeking shelter at your Lotus Feet. And Vishmarayate, how can Krita Vida, those who are knowledgeable, ever uh, uh, and who are distressed to ever forget you. So translation and purport. Now again, so that now we can understand the whole verse. Let's read it. O Master, Lord Brahma is fully surrendered to you. In the beginning you gave him knowledge and he could see and understand the entire universe. How could you understand it? Now it's described just as a person who awakens from deep sleep and visualizes his immediate duties. So here, is the two, these are the first two lines. Lord Brahma is completely surrendered, and he, in the beginning, you gave him knowledge, so he could understand the whole universe. He woke up from deep sleep, and he realized the whole universe. It's amazing, actually. You know, he woke, didn't have uh, some existence prior to it, but he woke up, and of course he didn't know what to do, but he had a realization. Uh, he, he made tapa, tapasya, and then he realized the entire universe, how it should work. So, but this is not a a little machinery, you know, like a, a watch, or it's already pretty complicated, but uh, there's a whole universe, there's a whole structure of this universe is very, very complicated. And, uh, and the, the Lord Brahma woke up and had this realization. Wow, it's like that. So uh, he had this realization. Just as a person awakens from sleep and visualizes his immediate duties. Like sometimes, you know, you wake up and you're, you, you know, like you need to identify yourself again, isn't it? You're like, who am I actually? What am I doing here? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm in this body and I need to do this duties and have this duties and I'm married and have children and everything. You know, you just put everything back together. If you have been really, really deep in sleep. But it happens, isn't it? Everybody, I think, has experienced it. <laughs> so here it's also described, the Bhagavatam says it, just like a person who is in deep sleep and awakens from it and visualizes his duties. This is what I should do now. And then, um, you're the only shelter of all persons who desire liberation. Um, and you are the best friend of those who are distressed. So this is the second two lines. He, um, how therefore can a learned person who has perfect knowledge ever even forget you? So you're, you're the shelter of those who, are, who desire liberation. And you're the friend of all those who are distressed. Um, interesting enough, I, I see in the word by word translation, we see those lotus feet, and they're not mentioned in the translation because uh, they're implicated in this uh, um, sh um, sentence. 
you're the only shelter for all persons who desire liberation. Because where do they take shelter? At the lotus feet of the Lord. Nowhere else but there. And you're the friend of all those who are distressed. So it's a very interesting translation. Shishi Pralat Nisimadev Bhagavan Ki. Jai. Wow. Beautiful. A Kadasim. Jai. Yeah, so he's the friend of those who are distressed. And uh, how can therefore, because you're such a good friend and such a good shelter, how can those who are a little bit learned uh, even forget you? So this is like, it's uh, impli uh, implicated like it's like, um, it's an audacity, it's an, uh, it's an offense, a great uh, uh, mischief just to even forget the, uh, the, the, the things that the Lord has even given you. And those, if you're a little bit learned, how can you even forget the Supreme Lord? So that's a very beautiful verse. Let's see what the Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada say uh, in this purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be forgotten even for a moment by the surrendered devotees. The devotee understands that the Lord's causeless mercy is beyond his estimation. He cannot know how much he is benefited by the grace of the Lord. The more a devotee engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord, the more encouragement is supplied by the energy of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that those who are constantly engaged in devotional service with love and affection, the Supreme Personality of God has gifts, intelligence from within. And thus they make further progress. Being so encouraged, even the devotees can never forget at any moment the Personality of Godhead. So let me see why again we cannot forget. It's uh, because in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, to those who are constantly engaged in devotional service with love and affection, the Lord gives intelligence from within. And thus they can make further progress and being so encouraged, the devotee never forgets any moment. So because the Lord gives in constant knowledge and guidance, therefore the Lord cannot, the devotee does not forget the Lord. He always feels obliged to him for having achieved increased power in devotional service by his grace. Saintly persons like Sanaka, Sanatan, and Lord Brahma were able to see the entire universe by the mercy of the Lord through knowledge of the Lord. The example is given that a person may apparently abstain from sleep all day. That's very interesting uh, comparison now. The example is given that a person may apparently abstain from sleep all day, but as long as he is not spiritually enlightened, he is actually sleeping. He may sleep at night and perform his duties in daytime. But as long as he does not come to the platform of working in spiritual enlightenment, he is considered to be always sleeping. Always sleeping. <laughs> a devotee therefore never forgets the benefit derived from the Lord. So he's ever grateful because the Lord gives him guidance and he actually wakes him up and is able to, to perceive. The Lord is addressed here as Artabandhu, which means friend of the distressed. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, after many, many births of executing severe austerities in search of knowledge, one comes to the point of real knowledge and becomes wise when one surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Mayavadi philosopher who, who does not surrender to the Supreme Lord is understood to be lacking in real knowledge. The, supreme, the, the devotee is in perfect knowledge cannot forget the obligation to the Lord at any moment. Yeah, interesting point here. The Mayavadi philosopher who does not surrender to the Lord is understood to be lacking in real knowledge. And the devotee is in perfect knowledge, cannot forget his obligation to the Lord at any moment. So because actually the Mayavadi is ignorant, he's not aware of the fact, therefore he is in, uh, uh, he forgets the Lord. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Agyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Umilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopi Shagopi Kakanta Radha Kanta Namusati Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhi Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Manchakal Patru Vashakri Prasindhu Bhai Vashapati Tanam Bhavani Vyavaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Vrai Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimati Karambakana Nasamati Namani Namo Vishnu Vrai Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Guru Dasya Jeta Samati Namani Namo Vishnu Vrai Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Samati Namani 
नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचलिनी विशेष संजीवाणी पास कहते हैं देश चैतन्य जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभुनि चनंद श्री राजेत गदाधर शिव सारि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे यस इट्स वेरी अमेजिंग टू बी एबल टू सी द लॉर्ड टू बी एबल टू सी द यूनिवर्स and uh, to see what the Lord is doing for us. So it said, um, here Prabhupada is referring to the verse in Bhagavad Gita, where the Lord says, I'm giving um, uh, those who constantly engage in devotional service, I'm giving them knowledge one with them. Those who are always worshipping love and devotion, I give them tall knowledge, uh, how they can come to me. So if you're sincerely worshipping the Supreme Lord, even a penguin in the ice, in the, or Eskimo in the North Pole, and, or Antarctic, if he's worshipping the Supreme Lord, trying to understand the Supreme Lord, he will get the knowledge how he can come to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even a penguin. So everybody can understand the Supreme Lord if they're, uh, if, if, if they're surrendered. So it doesn't say if you're in ISKCON, if you're in... A Hindu, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Christian, if you're this, only if you're a sincere devotee of the Lord. So that's very important that we are, um, and that always has been an a, a, a interesting topic. What's the, what does mean sincerity? What does mean, um, uh, yeah, uh, sincerity to, to serve the Lord? What is the qualification to be sincere? And uh, it, is, uh, it is something that is being described here as being grateful. Uh, there are many different facets of uh, sincerity, but here it said, um, how can a, a, a knowledge who has perfect, no uh, a person who has perfect knowledge ever forget you? The un Lord understands that the mercy is beyond his estimation. He has gotten so much, he's so grateful that he cannot forget the Lord. And this is called real knowledge, that we understand the Lord is giving us so much knowledge, so much wisdom, and every little step of advancement that I'm doing is due to the mercy of the Lord. And this gratefulness uh, is part of our sincerity. Because if we are not grateful uh, for, for all of this that we are getting, we are, we are, we are basically saying that I achieved all this, uh, what I've gotten now. Uh, we, we proclaim that all what I've gotten is due to my hard endeavor. But actually, it is through the endeavor of, uh, of the Supreme Lord who is all the time trying to improve us, all the time trying to, uh, to give us love and attention and facilitate our progress in devotional life. It's only due to his work, due to his, uh, const uh, his um, um, how would I say, to his constant, um, his um, diligent, uh, never unwavering determination to, to bring us back to his lotus feet. Only through this endeavor of the Lord, we are actually able to advance a little bit. So every spiritualist who thinks it's my endeavor that I've come so far, my endeavor that I've realized so far, it's actually a tendency of being a mayavad. If you're not grateful, you have the tendency of being a mayavad, of somebody who's very ignorant of the Supreme Lord. Because the Lord is all the time trying to bring us closer to Him. And if we take uh, uh, this, uh, the, this endeavor of the Lord, for granted, and say like, yeah, it's like, or it's my, even you say it's my endeavor, then we're actually not seeing things as they are. So it's very important to understand gratefulness uh, means sincerity. So sincerity means also to be humble. So many different facets, but this is one facet I want to um, um, shed light on. Then also it said that, um, how can we forget? So it's, uh, I thought personally, if, um, I'm a father now of two children, so if, uh, if I raise children now, the first three years of your life, you forget, you know? And as a parent, it's the most uh, 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 difficult time, you know, because they're doing all the weird stuff, you know? They're staying up all night, they're pooing in their uh, diapers all night and all day. <laughs> you need to clean them, you need to clean the everything, you know? <laughs> it's not very pleasant, it's so much work for the parents. And uh, they won't forget, they won't remember anything what you do. Hmm? 
And you might think, oh, that's a little like ungrateful, you know. But you as a parent, you do it out of love and affection. Because you care, you know, they're cute. <laughs> Not only because they're cute, but you care for, for them. They're, they're living em entities and they're helpless. And you, you want to help, you want to take care of them. So, um, out of this, uh, it's a very intense sense of mercy because, like, you don't take care of, of course, we take also care of animals and our, this is a, uh, our urge of, of mercy, which is inherent in a, in a living being. If you see somebody suffering, you want to help. So, um, in a similar way, also, it is, as a parent, you, you see the helplessness of a child and you're ready to take the trouble to help, the, to help rise, raise this uh, beautiful soul. Whoever it is, even though you know it might be kicking you, not liking you, this or that, it, it is quite very, very troublesome. Um, but uh, you take the endeavor, which actually uh, with a lot of um, enthusiasm. Yeah? <laughs> uh, it is, it is actually quite funny. You know, you don't get paid for it. You don't get anything. You just get gratefulness, and you feel obliged, of course, because it's your child. You put this soul into this world. It's your obligation to do it. But seeing from a materially uh, point of view, it's a very bad bargain. You know, you need to work so hard, you need to uh, be up all night, you need to um, be so patient, endure so many cries, and you will not even be uh, remembered that. Um, it's just an endeavor which is, seems in like, you know, you're being paid very little. But, uh, but what is there? There's the uh, loving connection. Mm? And this loving connection is that which outweighs, outbalances the whole endeavor. Mm? And this uh, loving relationship. And so that's the, the same thing with us here in the temple. We're doing so many things. And people might be thinking, what are you doing here? You're just like doing service for free, uh, not getting paid. And you all seem to be happy dancing. Are you crazy? <laughs> you're happy that you're not being paid, you know? You should get a good salary. You know, you're educated young people. But um, actually, it's, it's the loving connection. The, our loving connection to the Supreme Lord that makes this service of what we're doing very beautiful. Mm? It outbalances everything that we've gotten. Else, non, uh, uh, else how nobody of us would be here. We wouldn't be here if we think like, ah, it's just hard work and we are just doing something. No, we wouldn't be here. But because there's this loving relationship with the Lord and with the community, with the devotees, we actually stay in here and endeavor to, to perform devotion service. And it's very beautiful. So, um, like that, we can see that um, we as a person, we uh, we tend to forget. And um, forgetfulness, uh, uh, when most of us also cannot forget our own childhood. Hmm? Somebody of us, you can remember when you were three years old? Hands up. Four years old? Five, four years old, yeah, 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 four, yeah. Five years old? You remember something yeah, quite well? Six years old? Then, yeah, then, yeah, okay, yeah, something. Six years, then this becomes very clear. Similar with me, the three years, uh, like, not really. Six years, five years are uh, quite like vague, some situations, some moments, but not like I remember a whole day or a few days. So it's very interesting that uh, we might think like, if we don't uh, remember, did it actually exist? Did it actually happen? There's another thing that, uh, <laughs> um, a philosophy, a theory, that if, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody sees it, nobody observes it, did it even fall? Because it doesn't matter to anybody, actually. You know? But of course, we know, okay, the trees is also a living entity, and there are many bugs, and there is, so it matters for everybody. Um, but uh, but, but if, 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 if there's something happening which doesn't matter to anybody, did it actually exist? So uh, if you put it to extreme, if your life is not, uh, 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 has, does not have any impact on anybody, or does not do anything in this world, then did you even exist? <laughs> And, and it's very funny. Now, of course, we think, like, come on, you know, how can you say this? Now, I'm sitting here, and you can see me, and we're existing. But uh, 500 years ago, who was sitting here? We don't know. We don't care even, you know? So did they actually exist? For us, it doesn't matter at all. And uh, for many thousand living entities, it doesn't matter at all who was sitting here. And uh, we don't remember. We are not grateful, and probably maybe there was some farmer here doing some fields, or I don't know. We don't know who was sitting here. Or maybe there was some uh, ancient deity being worshipped here. Who knows? Mm. And um, but we don't remember anything. Mm. And uh, that's the that's the dichotomy of 
uh, of, um, of, of memory. You know, we, we try to capture, like we have photos, we have videos, we try to capture the moment so we remember our lives. If we wouldn't have photos, we, like, we don't know how we, would, uh, how we looked like when we were a child. No, just our own memories. But therefore we, have, we try to capture the moments, just to capture this, capture that. Because we want to capture existence, because all existence is just flowing away. Mm. But uh, uh, this uh, existence is not something which is uh, very graspable. So, but our relationship to the Lord is that which is we can grasp. So our relationship, like even if we grow older, what we remember is our, our relationship with the uh, parents, for example, hmm? or your brothers. So this relationship is something very intense. And this relationship you don't forget. This relationship becomes even more, isn't it? It, it enhances over due, uh, uh, in due course of time of your life. As a child, you, yeah, you're, usually as I remember as a child, I was sometimes annoyed by my parents. <laughs> oh, they're so boring. I want to do something else. I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, so you have different, you think, but in the, and then later you grow up, you're like, oh, they were so amazing. They did so much for me so that I grow, can grow up like that. You become grateful. And later you need to take care of them because they become old and you need to take care of them. And there are different stages of your relationship with your parents. And this relationship uh, grows. So that's just a mundane relationship. Well, to speak of your relationship with the Supreme Lord. And this relationship with the Supreme Lord is something very beautiful. Because um, you're, everybody's aware of it. Even a non-devotee, even a mayavadi. When you uh, have the inner dialogue with yourself. Like, Shall I do this? Shall I do that? Have big decisions in life. Some big trouble, some turmoil, some heartbreaking. No, then always you have this inner dialogue. So there's always a person helping you there. Always somebody, there's a, 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 a Gegenstimme, somebody solacing you, some, uh, somebody there for you. And this is the Supreme Lord in your heart. And this, he's always accompanying you. He's not giving you up. And this relationship, you're actually always, um, um, it's always growing. So uh, we as devotees, we try to nourish this relationship. Or we can just ignore the relationship and let it rot. Hmm? And it's also in Japa. We can, uh, uh, today I had very nice Japa, but before that I had today also very bad Japa, you know? <laughs> because uh, I was, as I said, I have children. So uh, 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 the uh, little one, Kadamba, he was awake and uh, I, I needed to take care of him. So at five o'clock he's like, yeah, ready for the day, you know? It's like, I want to chill my Japa. <laughs> Okay, what to do? So I take him on the lap, and he wants to grab this, he wants to grab that, and I need to chant some of my rounds, so you chant baby rounds, you know, Hare Krishna, I'm putting, hey, 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 I'm putting Hare Krishna, <laughs> like this, you know, what can I do? It's the only opportunity I have. So, and, and then you chant, and then I feel so sorry. And then uh, later, uh, he went to nap, and my wife took him, so I had some opportunity to chant. But the problem was my mind was already so geared at playing that my fingers were all the time touching the toys, you know? <laughs> and I was like, I cannot focus, what is this? And then at one point, okay, now I can focus. And then I, 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 can re and then I realized after the eighth round, like, I'm hearing the holy name for the first time. I'm really hearing the holy name for the, uh, my mouth is working, it's like muscle memory. You have it muscle memory, you come in the door and uh, like in the Pujari room here, you come in the door, you open the door, you switch on the light, and uh, you close the door. It's like goes automatically. I don't know if you have this. It just goes in one row, like it's muscle memory. So sometimes you just chant this muscle memory. You don't know what's happening. It's just like it's moving, and but you're not conscious of it. So sometimes we're not really conscious of our relationship with the Lord. We're just like in the middle of it. We're just. Ha it's just happening. It's just happening to us, but we're not really aware of it. And then uh, this uh, chanting is not so powerful. And then I chanted the first few uh, mantras, and then I tried to chant one round, but I need, needed to, to train my mind, don't touch the toys, no? Just sit there, sit up straight, and chant nice rounds. And those rounds went very nice, no? It was like very also satisfying for the heart. And also, you know, if you chant your rounds, and then in the end you put it away, you feel like, what did I do, you know? What did I do for two hours? Then it means you didn't chant good rounds. But actually, if you chant very nice rounds, and it's like, oh, it's so nice, it's really beautiful, you have to taste, it's like becomes, you have the sweet taste on your tongue. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So it's a very nice, very beautiful thing. Um, and, and, and like this is our relationship with the Lord. If we have, like, in devotional service, sometimes we, we hear all about uh, devotional service. What is bhakti? Bhakti means devotional service. Um, action. Sometimes, but uh, bhakti also does not only mean action, it also means contemplation. 
And uh, it's important that we have this inner dialogue. We sometimes just put everything aside. We don't need only to chant or to hear a kirtan or this. Just take some time for you and have, s have some dialogue with yourself. Have some dialogue with yourself and Krishna and your heart is like, where, where I'm standing at? Reflect what have you been doing? Where are you going at? Why are you doing these things you're doing? Is this what you're doing right? And, 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 and this can give you so much um, power to act in the moment where you are at. Because sometimes you're in this hamsterrad, you know, even yourself spiritually, you just do things, you have the muscle memory like chanting blah blah blah, but you don't know what actually you're doing. But once you reflect what you're doing, then actually you can be very effective. You can be very powerful. And, uh, and, and just this one round or two rounds which you chant powerful can be nice. Or this one day you have in devotional life where you are consciously trying to do something. It can be very powerful. Like today is Ekadasi. You can try today to do something very nice for the Lord and uh, can have a big impact on your spiritual life. Just this one day. Uh, so it's up to us to, uh, to do something spiritually in a very potent way or do something spiritually in a very superficial way. Um, because all of us anyway are here in the temple and we are doing something for the Lord uh, or in the live stream you're at home and doing something at home. But uh, we, it's our opportunity to do something consciously for the Lord or be doing something unconscious. And if, if we develop this relationship with the Lord, that is the best thing we can do, to be aware of it and be grateful. Um, that's what's said here. Like, how therefore can a learned person ever forget you? How we can forget the Supreme Lord? He's arranging so much, he's doing so much, he's taking so much care of us, and we're just forgetting him. You know, it's like uh, you, you, so, such ungratefulness. So uh, we should be very grateful of what the Lord is, is doing for us. And it's, it's amazing. If, if, if you reflect on it and you have a, also this inner dialogue, you can really appreciate it. And then this, uh, as Prabhupada says, then being so encouraged, the devotee can never forget at any moment, he says never at any moment, forget the personality of God. So this gratitude is the key to never forget the Supreme Lord because you're so grateful, you feel like the weight of it. I thought like, well, um, yeah, somebody uh, wanted to give me, uh, just a random person, I called up and he said, yes, I want to, he will, he, she, she wants to give me some, um, um, some item for free. Uh, and I was so grateful. And I thought like, oh, how can I repay that person? I want to do something in, in, in reciprocation, you know, even though she didn't want anything. But I thought I want to give something back. And, uh, and I thought that's such a nice thing. If you get some so much, we want to give back. So the same thing is the, if you have the burden, if you are aware that we have gotten so much, then we have the burden to, I want to give back something. I want to repay. So that's like, if you're actually conscious what the Lord is giving us, what we're doing, and then we, we feel a heavy burden of, of, of needing to give back. Hmm? And it's like, I also have some friends, don't want to name any uh, names, uh, most of you know, know him. <laughs> but if I want to give him something, he never accepts it. <laughs> because he's afraid that he needs to give something back. Yeah. It's very difficult to give him any present. No, 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 problem. no, no, not at all. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe. Anyways, um, so uh, it's very difficult to give that person anything. And, uh, uh, but, but it's actually something so nice and you want, really want to give him something. Um, so it's something very beautiful, it's a beautiful exchange. But, uh, yeah, naturally you feel very, in, uh, very indebted and you, and you don't want even to accept something because you know you need to give back something. You, you're, you're then in a dilemma. So uh, we should be very grateful and very aware of what we are uh, doing, what we are receiving, also what we are receiving from not only the Supreme Lord, but also from our fellow devotees. We have uh, received a lot, you know? we, have, we have grown together spiritually. Hmm? We have grown roots together spiritually here, uh, and and uh, or, or just by listening to this lecture, you know, we we are all just coming all together. You know, this live stream, everybody's listening sometimes at home, or uh, we are we are here, we are having association. We are all somehow growing together, and uh, and thus we need to be grateful. Before we had like this Dakshin thing that you uh, the teacher you you uh, thank the teacher by giving him some present, but. Um, we just can be grateful for one another to have uh, our association, no? that we have, can make nice kirtan together, that we can serve the Lord together, the pujaris, that they dress the Lord so nicely so that we can remember the Lord, the uh, ladies who did the garlands so beautifully, which is a huge endeavor. You know, sometimes things just like, 
just a little string of flowers, you know, but it takes one person a whole day to make those. <laughs> and it's so much endeavor, and then, you, and then after one day, you just throw it away. <laughs> you know, if you do outfits or something, you, you can put them on and on again, you know. But if garlands, they're so intricate and so, so much endeavor. You know, as a temple commander also, you know, you think like, all the time just doing the garlands, you know, you need one or two persons sometimes to do this garlands. What, why is it necessary, you know? It just, next day you throw it away anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's your, your your love for the Lord, you know, you show it, and then because that's one of the unique things that every day will be different. You will never have the same garland. It was a different garland, very beautiful. And the Lord says He likes the garlands. And the, so you see in the scriptures there are many verses this is being described as Manamali. He has a, a flower garland of, of forest flowers, uh, and uh, and it, he, it's always described and it's always very beautiful. Also the uh, Kumaras. To bow down to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and then to smell the Tulasi leaves. So all of these endeavors which seem actually very, very uh, troublesome, they're actually most endearing to the Lord because the, he knows like you're making so much endeavor just to please me and that's so nice. Hmm? That's very beautiful. So if you see the gardens, and so we can be grateful to everybody who are doing so many beautiful things. So yeah, gardens I think is one of the most un underrated services. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, cooking is very easy. That's it. I think, therefore, I like cooking, you know. <laughs> Everybody tastes, oh, it was so yummy. Oh, that was not yummy. Okay. If it doesn't, it's not yummy, it's not such a nice service. <laughs> but if, if it's yummy, you manage to cook some, some uh, good prasadam, then people, oh, that was so good. Thank you, Prabhu, you know. Everybody appreciates, everybody can taste it. But you know, garlands you cannot eat, you know. <laughs> Sometimes we have like fruit garlands, then you can eat them. But <laughs> then the children are happy, you know, for the Abhishek. But else it's underrated. So there are so many other different services. And we, we can be grateful of everything. All the devotees who are doing something. Also, you see the Tundi box. There is some money inside. So uh, many people have worked hard to get this money. And they put it into this box so that we can continue to serve the Lord. So it's, it's just like, seems like a little bill, some little money. But it's a huge endeavor. Just behind this money they are don donating to the Lord. And uh, of course we are grateful. But the Lord is a thousand times uh, uh, more grateful to the person because he sees like he's showing his affection to me. So it's like Rihasta. Also, I can see, I can do, what can I do? Me personally, I can do uh, uh, one time a week, I can do service, but I can, uh, the fruit of my work, the money that I get, I can put in the Hundi box, give a monthly donation, go do something. And that is uh, my, my appreciation. And that is like my love that I show to the Lord. Um, so we, we should not underestimate. So that's a, that's a box full of love that has been given to the Supreme Lord. It's a very nice thing, you know, we, can, uh, we should appreciate everything. So uh, uh, gratefulness, is a, it's a great sign of sincerity and we should be grateful for the Lord and we should never forget uh, the Supreme Personality of God. I said, therefore a learned person who has perfect knowledge, how can he ever forget the Supreme Personality of God? Srila Prabhupada Ki Ja, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. So any questions or comments? Critics, yes. It's interesting, yeah. Then, uh, so I repeat the question. We <coughs> sometimes chant and not nice rounds, and then we feel guilt throughout the whole day. How do we deal with it? Um, yeah, me personally, I think it's uh, first of all, uh, we should understand, uh, we should accept that we do chant bad rounds, and it is a normal thing to chant bad rounds. Yes, it is because we're conditioned. We're not pure. We're not like, if we try like, Oh, actually, I should chant ecstatic rounds. My hair should stand on end. And Hare Krishna. Oh, that's that's normal state of being. Of course, it's normal. But we are not normal. None of us are normal. <laughs> we are not normal. You know, everybody's different, and uh, we are in a conditioned state of life. We are in this material world, so it's normal that we chant not good rounds. Honestly, it's 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 just a normal state of affairs. Uh, but uh, we can try to endeavor to chant a little bit. So there are different techniques you can try to chant to improve your japa so that you can get the most out of it. And of course, I, there will be some days which will be better and some which will be worse. And we should not hang ourselves on it, know that we feel guilt and then 
Java has become something, oh no, better, I don't chant because else I feel guilty afterwards, you know, I didn't chant good rounds. <laughs> becomes a, a, a thing where you strangle yourself in. But uh, so rather we should um, see uh, on, on, the, on the rounds that we, uh, we try to do at least chant one, chant, you chant your 16 rounds, but chant one round very nice. Hmm? And if, if it's the first round, of course, it's the best. But if, you, uh, if it's the eighth round, just tell your mind, let's chant this one round. Let's really try, you know, like I was playing with the toys today morning. So I, I, I really tried, okay, this round, no toys. <laughs> My fingers just stay here, you know, don't move. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. And then it was, it was a nice round. So just one round, nice. That's already very good. And then we can top up in your course of time. We build up a, a certain sadhana, certain um, muscles, chanting muscles, like... Uh, immediately, when, when you come in uh, to the temple room, when I was Brahmacharya, it's very nice, you know, you just sit down and you can chant and focus. But I, I tell you something, that uh, for many years I was coming to the temple room and chanting very nice rounds, very simple. No distraction, nothing, physically was very focused, you know, physically seen, no distraction. But mentally was maybe more distracted than I was with the baby. Because I was not only with the baby when I was Brahmacharya, but I was Everywhere else, <laughs> but with the job. <laughs> so you know, sometimes when, when, when you have, uh, when you don't uh, curse yourself that you have certain situations, just take the opportunity to chant a few very powerful rounds, and these rounds can be so strong that it can really nourish your whole spiritual life. So those like, like Katvanga, within one second he took shelter of the Supreme Lord, and this second was so powerful. So you can, uh, if you see that you have the, uh, the weakness of not being able to compress 16 rounds in a very powerful way, then compress one in a very, very powerful way. And this one uh, round can carry, throughout, carry you throughout the whole day. But so that you can chant this one very beautiful round very nicely, it's good that you chant your 16 rounds so that the, uh, you have the opportunity to chant this one very nice round. Mm. So we should always stay at the 16 rounds, so we, we take the whole package and we always chant the 16 rounds, but at least chant one round very nicely. And then there's another uh, approach that we can try to, uh, in the mantra, to chant the first, uh, first name very consciously. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Next round you can try Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And then the mantra becomes more, co more conscious, very nice actually. And then you can go next round, then uh, you go to the next one, Hare. <laughs> and then Krishna again. And then it becomes very beautiful. Then you have like a, a progress. Also, it uh, consists of 16 names, so every round you will go throughout the whole mantra. <laughs> so it's, it's something very nice where you can fo focus on and, and train your mind. It's a muscle that we build up. And at and, and devotees, in your course of your life, you really build up your uh, concentration muscles for the japa. And we, we, you can have it and you can lose it again. You can, like, if, if you don't train it or you are distracted often, and distracted runs, then you, you, you again, um, you quickly uh, adopt the habit of being distracted. Hmm? It's a habit. It's not something that you need, your mind needs. It's just a habit. If you, if you train your mind to be the holy name, it can be very nice. Also as a brahmacharya, and at one point you, you figure out, like you have a habit to concentrate, and it's very nice. Just the runs go, and you feel ecstatic afterwards. And it's something very nice. Yeah. That's good. Hare Krishna. Any other questions? Thank you for the good question. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Thank you very much for your attention. Hare Krishna.